Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Mike. Uh, Want to jump in to a brief tutorial on how to set up VR mode on Flight Sim 2020, uh, which was released in December. So I went and picked up a Oculus Quest 2, the 256 gigabyte version, uh, to test it out. And just to give you a, a brief background on what equipment I'm running it on. So I have a Alienware uh, gaming PC. I have the R11 version uh, running a Intel i9 processor with 32 gigs of RAM. Um, I actually bought this computer specifically for Flight Simulator and it's performed very, very well. I know you can spend 10 grand on a gaming PC if you wanted to and and really maximize all the features Flight Sim has. This does uh, pretty much everything and I've been very happy with it to be honest. So uh, going to my flight controls, so I am running the Logitech uh, Pro Yoke and Rudder Pedals. Uh, those took me a few months to get because uh, they were they were really back ordered, but uh, they're it's well worth the wait and and in my opinion well worth the money too if you're looking for a for a true uh, simulator experience. And as far as my monitor goes, just a Samsung Thunderbolt 32 inch curved monitor. Uh, when you're not in VR mode, it works wonderfully. So. Uh, yeah, going to get into just a few of the steps and a few recommended settings to uh, get you on your way with VR and hopefully you have a good experience. Okay, going to jump in real quick just to the uh, PC link cable that is required for the um, uh, Flight Sim 2020 VR mode to connect to the Oculus Quest 2. Um, so Oculus has a PC link cable. Uh, the big problem I found is they want to charge you $70 for it. I went on Amazon and searched. Uh, so the, the cable type is a USB 3 type C cable. And you can get those very easily on Amazon. I think I paid around $30 for it and it's, it's worked great. Uh, Oculus has a long wait time right now for their cables. I was told mid to end of February. Um, it's mid January right now. So, uh, I didn't want to wait a month. So I decided to roll the dice and I'm glad I did cause, uh, you know, it saved me about, you know, 35, 40 bucks. So, uh, as you can see, it plugs right into the side. It's the cable. You do want, um, I got a, I think it's a 15 foot because you're gonna be you know, moving around a little bit. You don't wanna be completely leashed to your computer. So um, it's worked great so far. Plugs right into the side, is a little Velcro thing to, to kind of keep it out of your way. And yeah, gonna show you just a few quick steps on how to get rolling on, uh, on flight sim, super easy. Okay, real quick, so just uh in PC mode right now and uh, want to get the Oculus live to my PC. So um, first thing you want to do is download the Oculus uh, app, download it to your PC so we can recognize your device. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. And you're going to scroll down to devices. So right now it says Oculus Quest 2 and touch not connected. So we're going to go ahead and and they say to power up the Oculus Quest 2 first, which I just did. And after it's powered up, then plug the PC link cable in. So basically, you don't want to you don't want to have it plugged in while you power it up because you want it to be able to recognize that it's connecting to a computer. And then um, it's going to have a couple prompts. Now you're, you're going to want to put the Oculus on at this point, just for a quick second. And it's going to ask you um, in the actual system if you wanted to allow access to data and you want to deny that.
and then it's going to ask you if you want to connect to the Oculus uh, link cable and then you click accept or enable. So now we are connected to the PC and you can tell through this app because it's you've seen the green lights it's connected and and um, so now we are ready to fire up flight simulator. Okay, now we are in flight sim and we are ready to uh, uh, yeah, kind of mess around with VR and um, I want to show you the first couple steps you're going to have to take when your headset's all plugged in, we're in the game, so we're going to go to options, go to general, and we're in the graphics tab. And this took me a while to figure out, so hopefully this helps you guys. So there are, are two different um, two different tabs under graphics. So right now we're in PC mode. And if we hit that arrow, then there's VR mode. And that is where you can customize all of your um, all of your settings for VR. Now, this is gonna vary for everybody. Not one person's gonna have all the same settings because you need to cater it to um, you know, what type of RAM you have, what type of computer you have, internet speed, uh, and all that. So I have found that if you put the render scaling around 100 to, uh, we're gonna bump it to 150, uh, yeah, we'll do 110. Um, that's been a really good, really good, uh, render scale for me and for the equipment that I have. Uh, people with ridiculous gaming computers can probably go a lot higher. Um, trust me, I would love to, but, uh, basically what you're trying to achieve is a smooth experience. So if you put a, you know, all your settings way too high, you are it's it's going to be very very choppy it's you're not gonna it, you're not gonna like the experience so you want a smooth experience so i found here uh for my my personal settings that that this works out the best i'm, I'm keeping most of the the buildings trees terrain objects on high uh object level of detail for me 115 has been very smooth um, and then you can kind of see, you know, and, and some of the, some of the, uh, settings that I bumped down to medium or, you know, contact shadows, windshield effects, um, reflections, and these to me are not incredibly important during the game, and they, they, they do take up a lot of, uh, um, a lot of performance space so I bump those down to medium but again you know you're gonna want to you're gonna want to play around with this so once you've um, fixed all your all your settings to where you think might be a good uh, a good level for your computer you hit apply and save so we're gonna go ahead and save those settings and then comes the fun part so we're gonna go to VR mode And then you're gonna to wanna to go to this tab here. Now, once you hit this tab, it's gonna switch over into VR mode. So the screen is gonna look really funny and I, I wish, and I'm, trust me, I'm not that computer savvy. Um, so I would love to find a way to be able to record what I'm actually seeing through the VR. But uh, for now, this is gonna to have to do and you'll kinda of get the idea and hopefully you'll be able to find out for yourself. So we are in VR mode right now. So I am going to put my headset on. And the first thing you want to do is to recenter. Actually, the first first thing you want to do is to assign a key for this because uh, Flight Sim did not do that. And if you do not do that, um, your Flight Sim is going to freeze. So you want to assign a key for this to recenter in VR mode. And uh, 
I was getting frustrated because you can't even, I mean, you have to do a hard shutdown for the game. So I guess I probably should have mentioned that a little bit earlier, but um, assign a recenter uh, button. And mine is F9. So we are centered now, and I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, we're going to play around a little bit. So I live in Michigan, and uh, Detroit Metro Airport is kind of my home airport. So we're going to select that. We're going to fly around a little bit with the A320 Neo, and we're going to hit fly. Okay, everybody, here we are. We are... Uh, Currently in a Airbus A320 Neo um, at Detroit Metro Airport DTW. Um, I've got us on looks like runway 27 right. So here's your first view at uh, what VR looks like. Pretty freaking sweet. Um, you know, you can look basically 360 degrees around. And uh, so I'm doing live weather today, so this is very true to uh, what our weather is in Michigan today in late January. So, uh, you know, snow covered runway. And um, one of the coolest features is the pop up menus. You can literally put anywhere in the cockpit. So I, I like to have ATC riding shotgun with me um, in the co-pilot seat and then I'm gonna pull up the VFR menu just cause um, it's good to have you can see where you're going and, and I like to move this, actually we're gonna move this over to the left hand side we'll just put it right there and um, yeah so as you see, I'm going to pull back on the yoke, and uh, obviously the A320 doesn't have a yoke, but uh, um, everything is live in the cockpit. So if I want to put my flaps down, the flaps go down, flaps up. We're going to put a notch of flaps down for takeoff. So. Um, yeah, just to give you a visual on, on, on when you get your settings right, um, you know your settings are too high if you look over to the right or left too fast. Mine just kind of did that a little bit, and it, it blacks out. That means it's trying to catch up. You want to be able to, to gaze from the right to the left slowly and not have any interruptions. So that's kind of how you can gauge if your uh, settings are too high but um, yeah just gonna do a quick takeoff here uh, so we are 27 right DTW and uh, yeah let's do this and rudder pedals are live as you can see um, Yeah, taking off in a snowy day in Michigan. So we'll go ahead and pull up there and get airborne. We are airborne. We're going to take the gear up. And there's DTW, the main terminal. That's the McNamara terminal off to our left. And we have very little visibility, so not seeing much today. Gonna our flaps up. Oops, just put the gear down. And yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of what you get. And as I'm putting this A320 into a stall, didn't say I was the best captain in the world, but uh, 
yeah, hopefully this kind of helps and, and gets you to a VR experience a little bit quicker. And uh, yeah, love to get some feedback. Thanks, guys.